Looking for a review on a new Kenwood DNX 570HD? Well, you came to the right place. You are at the right channel. I am going to professionally guide you through everything you need to know about this model, everything that's good about it, and everything I think is not so good about it. As always, uh, my reviews are fair and unbiased, not for or against any, any product. I just tell you like it is from all my years of many experiences with these products, the goods and the bads about them. Now, on the outside, this is what you can expect on what's inside the box. You got the unit itself. I have already attached the sleeve onto it, which is the one and only sleeve. Unlike the DPX 300 and 500 BT units, which come with two rings, this one comes with the one. This ring here, I'd like to show you, is only about a quarter of an inch or so. It has these four locking tabs and it's used either with or without the supplied sleeve. So if you were going to start with a new installation and just cut a new hole and you put your sleeve in there, you bend all your tabs of course and you would have these locking side clips like so. Have that in the dash and you would be seeing the front piece right here like that. This trimming would cover it just like that. This trimming does fit on there rather nice gets a nice sturdy click once on there which we like now aside from that believe it or not Kenwood is using the same 16 pin harness that they use for their regular car stereo receivers that's weird I was very shocked when I seen that I don't know what's up with that but I guess that's good especially if you ever needed a new harness because you can get them cheap over here standard Bluetooth hands-free microphone it comes with a visor clip which you can use to mount up there or you could just remove it and do what I would do which is flush mount this unit. Let's move it along. Let's focus a little better because I think we could do a little better. Over here this is what your antenna is looking like. Same, same exact deal as they've been using for the last couple years. Nothing here has changed. So if you're upgrading from an older model Kenwood no need to change this whatsoever. It comes with a 15 foot cord, plenty of room. These things work tremendously well. They mount even underneath the uh, plastic or you know, material that's in your dashboard. You can put them underneath there. They're very forgiving on the dash, um, wherever. They work fantastic. Of course, you also have the, site, the ISO mounting screw hardware and the keys so you can actually remove your, your radio if you are mounting it with the sleeve. The keys just simply slide in right in there, release the tabs to unlock the receiver so you can pull it out and service it, whatever the case is. Um, we are going to get a close up onto this unit and go into full details of what it works, what it looks like, light it up in the whole bit, but right now we just want to stick to the outside. Over here on your side, you got plenty of mounting options, plenty of ISO mounting options. These are pretty much the most typical applications, but if you need to move it in or out, you can also do that a little bit. It's not as forgiving as the DPX series that I just reviewed yesterday but sufficient. On the back, whoa, here we go. Okay, now here we are at the back of this unit. It's a, it's a lot to handle, that's why I had to cut the camera off and come back because I don't wanna try to hold it and drive you nuts with my shaky hands. Now, on the back, like I said before, this here is the regular Kenwood 16 pin harness, which oddly enough gets mounted upside down. I guess it just worked out that way when they're, when they made this unit. It's kind of strange. I've never seen that before, but however, that is what it is. So if you get one and you're familiar with Kenwood, no, your your dash isn't upside down. The plug is. 10 amps, built-in uh, brushless fan, just like they've been using for a couple years now. Looks the same as any other one I've ever seen. They have added this extra harness, which is nice because if you don't need it or if you just you know have to remove this unit to upgrade or change something it's nice to have the option to just simply unplug it instead of cutting wires and putting them back together with crimps in there is just two wires one is for the parking brake the other one is for the reverse lead that's all it is two pins on there not a biggie now moving along here we have a, a six foot cable which is terminated for the USB so right there unlike all their standard double din receivers which have the 3.5 millimeter jack and the USB plug in the front of course this is a DNX series, this is a GPS in-DVD, it's a higher end unit 
higher end and flagship units always should be located in the rear in my opinion this one is that way you don't want to have some ghastly USB and some analog jack in the front of your stereo that's nasty looking so you don't have to worry about that and of course Kenwood has a cable to connect the iPod to this and I'll show you exactly how that works this here is my cable this is not a Kenwood original cable this is actually a Chinaman Ching Chang CDIU 50V which is just a 3.5 mil here standard USB and an iPhone plug okay um, these are you know the, the $20 variety this is not the OEM Kenwood I think they call it a KCA IP 102 I think they call it now uh, whatever it is you don't have to go out and pay top dollar for the Kenwood version they all work the same audio is audio USB is USB I mean you know there's no sense in being crazy about it but if you're one of those nutty people that just gotta have the Kenwood stuff go get your Kenwood cable but that's a little tip to save you a few bucks USB is here so with between the six foot of that and most likely the six three to six foot you're gonna get on your extension cable you're gonna have ten feet or more to get this cable terminated to run it you know in your center console and your dash in between your seats wherever you're gonna wanna get it okay so moving along up here we have the RCA input for the rear view camera this has a, uni a universal RCA composite uh, video input which is dedicated so that when you go into the reverse of course connected to the reverse lead through the wire this would feed the video signal onto the screen for the camera there's your slave video output and over here we have the audio video in and the dedicated video input for the iPod 2 the microphone which is the one that's supplied of course the GPS antenna which I showed you before plug it right in like so over here this is for something called iDatalink Maestro this is a new thing I haven't even touched on it I haven't even gotten one of these in my hands in my possession uh, yet I don't know if anybody has or, or what the story is but I do know that the iDatalink Maestro iDatalink is the same manufacturer who makes like remote start a, mo a mobilizer bypasses and a lot of other cool stuff for security stuff but now they have a new product for audio so this will directly interface with something like a Ford Sync and it'll make everything work flawlessly and does it all through CAN bus digital data very nice um, I'm sure in the, in the future I'll be making a tutorial on this explaining you how it works what's up with it but I'm sure it'll be no let down not by a far cry and over here there's your standard antenna jack input nothing exciting there or AV output and here you have your dedicated front rear and sub stereo preamp outputs which is nice you have a stereo subwoofer output I like that these are all 2.5 volt outputs and over here you have a plug which is for the Sirius XM tuner which is the V200 that's the direct tuner which is designed to work with that you plug that in there plug in your antenna run it mount it activate it done that's how you get your satellite radio so it's pretty nice as far as the size goes um, no changes from last year standard double din four inches by seven and a quarter by seven and a half more or less maybe not seven and a half exactly but close enough and we're back to where we started from so now I'm gonna get on out of here and I'm gonna turn this unit on get it into demo mode and I'm gonna start explaining to you some of the features then we're gonna do a hands-on inter interaction with this unit a little bit so we'll see what she can do so on with the review of this 50, 570 HD this is with a video on the screen of course as you can see but now I want to touch on some of the features that this unit has and basically explain to you what this unit will do now the nav on this unit is a little different than it was in the prior models the 570 HD features insta search and insta route which finds points of interest and routes five times faster than the older model does so that's a good thing so in the older unit which wasn't slow to begin with because Garmin is not known for its for its lack of speed this one is actually even better so it's even a more substantial bump than what you've experienced in prior units with Garmin so you'll get reliable routing as usual from those super geniuses over at Garmin plus a level of smartphone connectivity that'll let you take full advantage of your phone's features and allowing you to drive fully safely with this unit they work seamlessly together now as far as the phone goes this would be a very good choice for somebody who uses either a Blackberry an Android or an iPhone my guess is that you either have an Android or an iPhone but with a separate cable and I say that with a separate cable for the iPhone because I won't say the same thing for the Androids um, 
you'll get control of the Pandora and the AHA radio as well as the iHeart radio apps through the receiver's touchscreen when it's connected through the cable. App mode also gives you limited control over the selected apps on your phone. This unit is also compatible with the phone's Siri feature on select email, Bluetooth calling, and iPod commands. So that's good to know. As far as Android goes, you'll get full control of your smartphone's Pandora, AHA, iHeart through the Bluetooth, so there's no cable needed. The Kenwood Music Control app also gives you easy search and playback for the Android's phone music through the receiver. So it's just to slow that down, Kenwood Music Control. What Kenwood Music Control means is that you'd have to go onto your computer, download the app, and utilize that through your phone and communicate to it wirelessly from your Android device to this stereo, just to clarify. This unit also has built-in Navtech traffic reports. Navtech, which is who creates the software for this unit, um, if you didn't already know, um, has traffic information for major metro areas, um, no cost to you. Totally free, built in, you get it out of the box, turn it on, your GPS, you have it. So you'll be able to see congestion along your route and find a better way around it right from your touchscreen. Bluetooth, of course, built right into the unit, as well as an HD radio tuner. So just as you would always listen to your regular standard HD radio stations, use it just the same, except you're going to get all the RDS information and text on the screen, um, and you're going to get digital sound as opposed to the old analog static stuff that you were all, always used to for the rest of your, you know, your life until it ever came about. So if you're a big FM radio listener, you'll certainly appreciate it. Um, myself and most people, I would imagine, use their own sources, uh, such as their MP3 files or a, um, a web-based app to get their music most of the time these days. So it's not the biggest deal. HD radio kind of came and it went, you know, you know, hey, it's free. It's built in. So take it for what it's worth. So, of course, this thing will also play CDs and, you know, MP3s, MP3Rs, all that kind of stuff. Um, there is a disc in here. I just want to take that out real quick. The mechanism is nice, it's not junk, jumpy, it's not sloppy, it's not, you know, quick to vibrate or give you any kind of trouble, so that's a really good feature. It loads very quickly, as you can see, that's a DVD, which just booted up, that's pretty quick. Um, another thing that I might want to pick on with this unit is when you do turn it on for the very first time, it does take a good five or six seconds, I didn't figure it out exactly, sit there with a stopwatch, but it does take a minute for it to boot on. Not as bad as some of the other units that I've seen. Um, but still good. I mean, for the improvements that they've, you know, added to the system, you should expect something like that because, you know, just like a video game, it's a, if it's a really good video game, it's going to take a minute for it to boot up and start before you can play it, as opposed to some crappy game, you know, it's just going to come on real fast. So, understand that. Now, this unit also, um, as I touched on briefly in the beginning of the video, on the back there's, there's preamp outputs for, you know, front, rear, and sub outputs. So that's really important for your amplifier if you're going to use an amplifier with this, which of course I would always suggest. But if you're also going to add a satellite radio tuner, you get the V200 like I told you, um, rear view camera so you can see what's going on behind you. You have a dedicated rear view camera input. You can override that. You can see the, the camera on the screen whenever you choose to see it. So that's really cool. Um, some of the audio functions I'm going to get into in a little bit, but there's another function. Um, I'm not going to bore you to death, but I will touch on it because it's important to um, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, and going forward in, the, in time as this video becomes more and more watched and more more plausible, uh, people that are utilizing video uh, cars that have like sync or sync type of systems where their radio controls their climate, um, their seats, uh, all their settings, all those kinds of crap. This unit is compatible with all that stuff, and I think it's pretty important that. I'm going to show you because you're not going to see this on, you know, Kenwood USA's videos. They're not going to show you this. They're not going to waste your time. They're just going to show you the meat and potatoes. Me, you know, I show you the real stuff. Um, there you go. Source, I believe it. It's where it's at. See here, OEM setup. Watch this. Vehicle feature settings. Your OEM Bluetooth, which you would, which you would control all your factory stuff where your mic is. Um, of course, it'll play through all the speakers and stuff just utilizing this new head unit. Um, your OEM satellite radio ESN, so if your car had factory satellite radio, you wouldn't have to use the V200 and get the aftermarket one that works with Kenwood because you can maintain and keep your existing from your from your stock car. Um, OEM voice volume, which is the setting. Um, here, you see what I'm talking about? Parking distance control settings. 
climate control settings, Maestro module settings. This, again, not going to get crazy, but the Idatalink Maestro, it's it's on the market, I believe. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't made the investment or the jump into getting them. They are around. I mean, if you can go to idatalink.com or just Google Idatalink Maestro, there's information out there. So if you want to know about it, there's there's plenty of fun to be had, and you can certainly brush up your knowledge and learn about it. Because if you're going to get one of these, I would advise you to install it the proper way and utilize what you have. Integrate, don't eliminate. Um, so the Maestro, will just leave that be. Steering wheel audio controls, of course this is compatible because I showed you on the back. It has the input for that, so that's pretty cool. Um, as far as the highlights of this unit, um, 6.1 inch touchscreen, AM FM tuner built in. You got 18 presets for FM, 6 AM, 4 inch tall because this is a standard double DIN unit. Built-in amp is 22 watts RMS, 55 by 4 peak, which is, of course, BS because no stereo is 50 watts by 4. But realistic, you know, it's going to sound nice and clean for the average guy. But for the guy who's eccentric and really likes great sound like myself or maybe you, you're going to buy a real amplifier, of course, and that's how it's going to be anyway. Built-in Bluetooth, we already talked about. Audio streaming goes without saying. Uh, Pandora for iPhone, cable is required. Android, BlackBerry, not so much, don't need a cable. HD radio built in, built in iPod control, um, cable I already touched on, but again, this is what the cable looks like. We sell these for like 16 bucks. There's a little plug for, for, for us. If not, go get them yourself. Be a jerk, buy from somebody else, whatever you're going to do. Um, okay, audio controls, always a very important thing to me and should be to you. So let's get into audio controls next. All right, going forward, I want to talk about some of the other stuff with GPS. As far as the GPS goes, um, I mean, you can see, I don't know if you watch these videos from uh, my prior stuff, but the GPS, I mean, you're buying the GPS, in my opinion, from Kenwood because it's Garmin based. I mean, I love Garmin. Whenever I go away on vacation and I, if I'm not using my own stereo, um, it's always a Garmin because Garmin, in my opinion, it, it is the best. I, it re I really think that it is the best. The only thing that's bad about it is that you cannot search by phone number. That's the only thing I never liked about it. Um, I'd like to see that be improved in the future, but aside from that, you know, it's really not a deal breaker. Um, this unit does have um, a park brake, a parking brake detection wire, so within that, that wire in the back, you do have to, you know, deal with that and ground it if you're going to have um, full functionality for all the video and uh, GPS functionality while you're in motion, of course. Um, you got a variable color illumination because you probably see as you, as we're talking, those things are changing around. You can change that to any color you want. Um, also, when it's off, it has a security indicator. When you flick your lights on in your interior, it does have a dimmer built into it. Um, Garmin, Navtech Nav, which we've touched on. Software map updates, you can get at garmin.com forward slash Kenwood for a fee. Keep that in mind. Um, the unit's micro SD slot is located on the front panel. Um, which is very nice, and that applies to the 800 series. Text-to-speech voice prompts, of course, which is standard Garmin GPS stuff. Um, this does have the blown up, exploded, you know, um, visualizations for the uh, G for when turns are coming up. So it'll show you the actual name of the of this of the turn, the exit, the exit number, all that information. Things are really changing as far as GPS. It's not like it used to be. It's so much more better. Um, and that's something you just have to see to believe. And I believe that Kenwood does have a pretty intense demonstration on how the GPS works on their on their site because they did a, a couple um, reviews on their own products uh, at the CES show. And I would definitely suggest that you go there. Don't just take my word for it. It's very good. Um, so aside from that, I mean the size. It's it's a very nice it's a very nice monitor. The price is very fair. It's a very clean look. I like the way that they placed all the cables in the back. Um, I like the functions. I like the way that they kept it streamlined and they made it very functional, very simple for people to use. The interface is is very well. It's laid out very nicely. Nav, disc, and telephone, which is the meat and potatoes of what you're going to use this thing for. Um, the setup screens, the audio, which I touched on, Pandora, Bluetooth, and Yaha. I'm not going to touch because it's just too much. I'm not going to pair a phone. Because, you know, do you really care about watching me pair my phone? Probably not. Um, standby, your, video, your auxiliary video inputs, USB. I mean, what else can you really ask for? I mean, literally, this unit has damn near everything you want. The price is pretty fair. I mean, it's tough to beat. So if you're looking to get yourself this, you know, a new head unit, either Kenwood, do yourself a favor, 
look at their other brand, which is JVC. Myself personally, I can't be partial or or non-partial because that's that's not what I do. Um, of course, I have my own feelings and things in my own cars, but I don't talk about them anymore because I've gotten too many people being assholes telling me that I talk too much. So I'll now just keep my mouth shut. It's a shame that I have to be that way, but that's just the way it's going to have to be. But that's my review of the Kenwood so DNX 570 HD. All right, so from the home screen, just so you're staying with me, there's your main sources. Setup we already touched on a little bit for the Maestro, but you know, not a whole lot going on there. So let's just let's just worry about the audio because that's what I want to show you. Audio controls. All right, so this is going to be a little different for some of the other models. I know that my title is going to say it's covering the 570 HD and the 800 series and and some of the Exelon stuff. The Exelon stuff does have superior audio controls, so keep that in mind. If you're buying Kenwood, Kenwood is not going to be as good and robust as a Kenwood Exelon never has been, never will. Now, audio control, we'll go into here. This here is just your basic fader balance. I mean, pretty straightforward, all right? Volume offset, what that means in English is that if you're going from, say, your iPod, so iPod source to your regular tuner source, the tuner is most likely, in all actuality, depending on how the music was recorded and et cetera and so on, blah, 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 one might be really much lower in volume as opposed to the other source, kind of like how a TV is when you're watching a commercial to the regular program. The commercial is like twice as loud and it drives you nuts. Um, this will allow you to change that right from there. Okay. Um, subwoofer control right there. You got your volume, loudness turning on and off. And there's lots more with this audio stuff comes from so I'm going to get into that. Um, the EQ which is really the meat and potatoes of it for most guys. You got your system Q which are preset like in most stereos, pop, rock, jazz, top 40, uh, user, settings, natural, which is flat. Um, you could do that. You could turn it off, whatever. But this is really what I would suggest most people do. And really, that's the joy of having a cool stereo, is having things to play with. This here is your, your EQ. Again, I've never liked the way Kenwood's EQs are, the way they work, the way they look. Um, not because I don't understand them, because I certainly do. But... Unfortunately for most people, they just do not have that much of a grasp, but have that much of an interest to understand how to grasp it. So when they look at all these numbers, they get a little thrown off. They just sit here and go like this and listen and, and say, oh, that sounds nice. Oh, yes, let's, let's do that. And you do this and you say, oh, that, that's good. And then you save it. And then you don't even really understand why it is that you're doing it. But, you know, to have frequencies where you can adjust, you know, um, yeah, okay, in your bass. The lowest you're going is 60 hertz, okay? The reason why is because they're going to most likely presume that someone with a subwoofer is going to allow you to get pick up 60 hertz and lower because subwoofers, let's just put it like it is, they're, su they're, they're subsonic. I mean, they have no musical value. They're audible distortion. Um, but for the average guy who wants to increase his bass, I mean, you can just sit here and go 60 hertz, you know, change your your level up and down and the Q factor which is going to be the width or the, or the slope of the sound but again do you really understand it? Do you understand what I'm even talking about now? The chances are you don't but you know if you do that's great but for the average guy I've never been crazy about the sound settings on Kenwood's whenever I used to have a shop and I used to do installations and have to complete and show this system to a customer and actually demo it I would have to do this in by myself and take the time and close the door and listen before I can even turn a key on and show a car to a customer because a customer is never going to sit there and try to understand this. That's why Kenwood gives you a disc. If you notice that the manual on this, on this unit is very thin, you have to watch an entire C, CD or DVD ROM or whatever the hell it is just to understand how to use the EQ. So me personally, they could have done better. I mean, JVC and Kenwood is one in the same company. JVC has, I've been saying it for years, by far the most fucking awesome equalizer ever seen to mankind. It's like a real human EQ with bars. It's a lot. Of, it's very visual. It's very instantaneous. It's very gratifying and enjoying to use. Why Kenwood doesn't use it is beyond me. I don't know. So you can see I'm not crazy about this whole EQ thing with Kenwood. Never have. Um, never will be. They do have shortcuts, which is cool. Uh, very, very much like their counterparts over at JVC. Um, so it'll always take you here to your home screen. You always have a telephone button which will always take you to your Bluetooth functionality or your phone, upload your phone books, search for a person, do a text, answer a call, make a call, 
check your messages, all that stuff right there. The main home button, push it in, always takes you as a shortcut, and these are custom customizable. Your nav, which of course is for your GPS, should have an, obviously a, a quick button to navigate to uh, the GPS. Now also on the GPS, you can do split screen. So if you have a DVD going on, you can feed that to the rear zone while the front zone is doing, say, satellite radio. So you could have satellite radio on the front speakers. Rear, you could be feeding uh, a video and see that video on a split screen here and have it running as a slave to rear headrest or a flip down monitor and have GPS going on simultaneously as well as having hands-free Bluetooth interrupt all at the same time. So that's really cool. Um, iPod functionality is certainly no, no slacker. Lots of text, lots of information, ease of control. Nothing to complain about there. Again, this video, I can only keep it so long, but take my word for it, it works very well. There's other videos to show you the iPod functionality, so just take my word for it on that. 